In this tutorial video, we're going to look at taking a few models created in EasyCrate and bringing these into the software to create a sign. So if we click the create option here, you may be wondering why we're not creating the entire sign in EasyCrate, which we could do. And I have a prompt I've already created for this to describe the sign that we want, which was create a sign for a car garage that includes a tire in the background, a classic car in the foreground and a banner below. So if we use the whole prompt for the sign in Easy Create and use the Create option here, you can see that it has given us two different options, but it isn't exactly the layout that I want. And there is a very specific layout that I want for this design. So in this instant, as we have a particular layout, we may want to create the model for the tire and car separately, and then bring that into the VCarve software to place the models exactly where we want them. Another benefit to doing the models separately is now that we have two separate models that we may also be able to use in future projects as well. So I'm going to click create here to start a new model. So first I'm going to create a model for the tire in the background. So I'm going to type in the prompt here a tire at a slight angle and click create. So I like the image here that has been produced. So I'm going to select this option and I'm going to remove the background as we don't need the background. And then I'm going to create a model from this. So now we have the model. You may want to go through the settings here to edit this model before saving it out. If you would like more information on these settings, we do have other tutorial videos that go over each of these settings. But for us here, I quite like the model height, the detail, and I don't see that I need to use the replace below option. So I'm going to save the model out straight away. And I'm going to use the .v3m file option here. So now we have the tire model. I'm going to click the create option again as we will now need a model for the car. So for this prompt, I'm going to put a classic car at an angle. If there was a specific type of car that we wanted, we would also want to put this into the prompt as you will want to give the prompt as much detail as possible. And then I'm going to click the create option here. I like the image here on the left, so I'm going to select this. And again, we don't want the background for this, so I'll select to remove the background here, and I want to create a model for this. And again, I'm just checking in case I want to change any of the settings. But again, I quite like the model height. I might increase the detail ever so slightly on this model and I don't need to use the replace below option. So again, I'm going to click download and download this as a .v3m file. Now we have created the two models that we need for our sign in EasyCrate. We can now go over to the VCarve software. So as you can see here, I've already got a new project set up for this. So we could import both files by using the import a component or 3D model option here. But as they are .v3m files, we can also add them to our clipart tab. The easiest way to add any easy create models to the clipart tab is to make sure that you are signed in through the software, which will add any easy create model that you have created using that account to the software. So you should see the easy create models folder here, and this will list all the models you have created in easy create. So now I'm going to go into the 3D view. We can now look at creating the sign for the car garage. So first of all, I'm going to add the tire model to the project. 
so I'm going to place it about there I may move it slightly in a bit once we have the other models in the project I also think I'm going to increase the size of it slightly but I'm happy with that at the moment again we can edit this later on if it's not in the correct place and then next of all I'm going to add the car so as we can see with the car model you can see that quite a bit of the model is actually hidden behind the model of the tire which is not what we want as we want the car model to sit in front of the tire model so we will need to edit the shape heights and base heights of the model to get them to sit in the correct place. So first I'm going to click the tire and then you can see the options down here which is the overall height of the model, the shape height of the model and the base height of the model. So for the tire I just want to reduce the shape height slightly so if I click on this option and then drag this down slightly I can reduce the shape height of the model but I don't want to lose too much detail in the tire so I think I'm quite happy with there but I don't want to reduce the shape height any further so now I want to select the car model and I want to edit the car model now instead so I do want to increase the size of the car slightly and drag that so it's more in the center and then Again, I want to add a slight shape height to the car, but for the car also, I do want to add a slight base height as well, as this will add a flat base to the back of the model, which will help it stand proud of the tire. So I'm going to click on the base height option here. I'm going to drag this so I can add a slight base height to the model. And I can see that this has improved where the model sits slightly, but we do still see that the car model is hidden behind the tire here. So I'm actually going to use the tilt option to remove this. We can find this option by selecting this option here. And you'll see here that we have the tilt option that we can select. So I'm going to select this and next we need to select the anchor points. So I'm going to click the set option to set these so we want it to go from the back of the car to the front of the car and now that the anchor points are set we can use this drop down option here to set the angle so now we can just increase the angle slightly until the top of the car is above the tire so I'm happy with how that looks so I'm going to close this I'm going to move the car ever so slightly so it's in the correct place to where I want it. So one thing we do have left that was in the original prompt was that we wanted a banner below them. Now I didn't create a banner in Easy Create because we do have some banners available with the clip art that comes with the software. Now if we click on the ribbons banner option here in the clip art tab you can see that we have a few different banner and ribbon options below. So I do like this banner here. So if I add this to the workspace and increase the size, but as you can see, it curves downwards and I quite like it to curve the opposite way. So I'm going to rotate the model 180 degrees. So it curves in the opposite direction. So if we go to the design tab, select the rotate selected option here and we're just going to enter 180 select apply and we can see now that the banner curves in the opposite direction so i'm going to select this and i'm going to drag this up so it sits at the bottom of the models that we have just created and as you can see the ribbon is behind some parts of the model so again I just want to edit the shape height and base height of the ribbon so it sits slightly higher from the tire in the background so again I'm going to select this and I'm going to select the base height this time click on it and drag it up till I am happy with it so I'm quite happy with how that looks I am going to just bring the car ever so slightly higher up 
but I do quite like the effect of the car going slightly over the edge of the banner here so I'm going to leave that as it is. Now I do want to add some text to this banner so I'm going to go to the draw text tool and I'm going to add some text to the sign and I'm going to change the text because I'm not I don't particularly like this font for this sign so I'm just going to change the font type by looking through the different fonts that I have now I quite like this font here and I feel like it goes with the sign. I do want to reduce the size of the text slightly so it will fit on the banner nicer. So I'm happy with that, but I do want to add a curve to it. So if we go back into the 2D view, we can now select this option or this option to curve the text. Now I want to curve the text down, so I wanna select the green box at the bottom. And if we click and drag this, you can see that it curves the text. So I'm just going to place this on the ribbon so we can have an idea of how the text will sit on the ribbon. It's a bit too much of a curve so I'm going to reduce the curve slightly. Now I'm going to close out of the create text tool. I'm going to reduce the size of the text again to allow the text to sit nicely on this banner. Now I'm happy with how this is looking. So I'm going to go back into the 3D view and I really like how this looks. So now we can apply the toolpaths to this sign. So I'm going to go over to the toolpaths tab. So first I'm going to check the material setup and we can see here that the overall thickness of all the models in the file is actually larger than the thickness of the material we're using. So if we select the set option here we can actually enter a new height for the overall height of all the models in the project. So for this, I just wanna go slightly less than the material thickness. So I'm gonna put in 1.95 and click apply and close. It has edited the height of the models in the project. So the overall height of all the models now come to 1.95 inches. I also want to make sure that the model position is set to the bottom of the material. And now I can click okay. Next, we're going to create the 3D toolpaths for this project. But first, I will need to create a vector around the outside of the model for the settings I will want to use in the 3D roughing and 3D finishing toolpath. So to do this, I will need to go back over to the design tab and select all of the models in the file and go over here to the create vector boundary around selected components option. Now if I click this, you can see here it has created vectors around the model. Now currently these are grouped together and I want to remove this vector on the inside here as I just want the vector around the outside. So I'm going to right click on this, select ungroup, and you can now see that I can select the vectors separately. So I'm going to select this vector here and delete it. So we are just left with the vector around the outside. So now if we move over to the toolpaths tab in the software. With this vector selected, I'm going to go into the roughing toolpath. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. I'm happy with this. I want to change the machining limit boundary to the selected vector option as we want to use this vector. And I'm happy with the rest of the settings. And I'm going to click calculate. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to hide the roughing toolpath. Now I want to select this option here so we can see the vectors in the 3D view again. I want to select the outside vector again. Go into the 3D finishing toolpath. Again, I'm happy using an eighth inch ball nose tool for this. Again, I want to change the machining limit boundary to the selected vector. And I'm happy with the other settings that I have here. And I'm going to click calculate. So now if we preview these two toolpaths. You can see that it has cut out the models. So next I want to close out the toolpath preview and we want to create a V carving toolpath for the text on the ribbon. So again, I want to make the vectors visible in the 3D view. I want to select the text here and go to the 
be carved toolpath. So for this toolpath, I want a start depth of zero. I do not want to add a flat depth. I'm happy with the V-bit tool that is selected, but I need to make sure that I have the project toolpath onto 3D model option here selected, which as you can see here, it is already selected. Now what this will do is it will project the V carving toolpath onto the curve of the ribbon clip art we have in this project. So I wanna click calculate here, and if we preview this toolpath, you can see here that it has cut the text on top of the ribbon. Now the last toolpath we want to create is the profile toolpath. So I want to close out of the preview again, make the vectors visible again in the 3D view, and we can now use the vector again that we created around the boundary of the models to create a profile toolpath for this sign. So I'm gonna click on here. I want to make sure that it's cutting all the way through the material depth, and I'm gonna use the quarter inch and mill again for this around the outside of the vector. So I'm happy with these settings, and I'm going to click calculate here. And if I preview this final toolpath, you can see that it has created the sign we wanted. So I can double click on the material around the outside to remove it. And you can see here that we are left with the sign we wanted to create. I hope you have found this tutorial video helpful on using Easy Create to create the individual models that you need for a project and then bringing these into the software to assemble and create a sign.